Of the two extremes, those who say the prequels are garbage, and those who say they are better than the original trilogy, I would fall somewhere in between. I liked them, but anyone who watched them knows that each movie could have been better executed. The first of the prequels, The Phantom Menace, gives writers a great lesson on the importance of focusing on your best characters. The Star Wars prequels as a whole center on two main character arcs, Anakin's fall to the dark side and Palpatine's rise to the Emperor of the Galaxy. Generally speaking, The Phantom Menace missed key opportunities to execute one of these two character arcs, the arc of Senator Palpatine, or Darth Sidious. When to reveal the true identity of a secret villain can greatly influence a story. Too early and you run the risk of both depriving your audience of a wonderful moment, as well as diminishing tension that could have been built around the mystery. But too late and you run the risk of depriving your audience of a series of wonderful moments that could have happened if the audience was allowed more access to the life of that character. Whether to reveal such a secret early or late in a film depends upon the type of story being told. Generally, trying to add too much mystery into a prequel is like swimming against the current, because we already know what happens. Imagine if the writers of Red Dragon tried to write a prequel where Hannibal Lecter was secretly a murderer. Clearly, that wouldn't work because of what we already know from Silence of the Lambs. We watch prequels not to see what happened, but how everything happened. I can't imagine many people were surprised in Episode 3 when Palpatine revealed himself as the Sith Lord. For those who didn't know that Ian McDermott also played the Emperor in Return of the Jedi, the end of The Phantom Menace made it quite clear to the viewer that Palpatine was Sidious. Hell, the first time we heard Palpatine speak in that raspy tone, most people probably figured out that he was Sidious. So, within the story, there's no real benefit in keeping his true nature concealed, or at least unconfirmed to the audience. In The Phantom Menace, incorporating Palpatine's scheming into the plot would have sucked us in. Every scene with Palpatine was good. He brought instant tension, and there's so much more that could have been done with him. Palpatine's mentor, Darth Plagueis, was alive during the events of The Phantom Menace. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew. Then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. Sidious only killed Plagueis around the time he became Chancellor. In Act 1 of The Phantom Menace, allowing the audience to witness Palpatine's background activities would have built more tension in the capital, and would have cut the need to establish unnecessary characters, like Jar Jar and maybe even all of the Gungans. It took about 11 minutes of screen time from the moment Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan met Jar Jar to the time they reached the city. This time could have been better spent establishing one of the two main character arcs of the prequels. After this scene, imagine that, instead of introducing us to Jar Jar and taking us to Gungan City, the writers instead followed Palpatine as he openly advocated for the people of Naboo and then ventured into the shadows to meet with his master, Darth Plagueis. Audiences would have loved the tension as Palpatine not only executed his master's plan for the return of the Sith, they would have loved to see Palpatine calculate and execute the destruction of his mentor while training his new apprentice, Darth Maul. Since this plotline allows us to avoid Jar Jar, introducing Anakin would have more momentum, as we wouldn't waste time with Jar Jar's distracting antics. The act as is does a good enough job establishing that Anakin is special, his life sucks, and that Qui-Gon will manipulate events to rescue Anakin and bring him to the Jedi Order. But let's look at how focusing more on Palpatine affects the last act of the movie. The only purpose the Gungans serve is to draw the droid army away from the city. But if you took the Gungans away, I don't think many people would point to the screen and wonder where the droid army was, especially if the Naboo capital had the feel of a functioning city. Even a city under occupation could still have people working during the day, and the Queen, her guard, and the Jedi could have blended in and snuck into the palace just the same. In any case, imagine that, instead of the alliance between the Naboo and the Gungans, those scenes are replaced with a series of scenes that culminates with Palpatine killing his master, Darth Plagueis. Either in place of or after this scene, where Sidious tells the Trade Federation to wipe them out, cut back to Sidious in the Senate, positioning himself to win the Chancellorship. Each of the next six scenes where the Gungans battle the droid army would be replaced with Sidious and Plagueis. Sidious would inform Plagueis of what transpired on Naboo and that he had been elected as Chancellor. Sidious would carefully manipulate his master until he could put him in a weakened state. After taunting him, Palpatine would kill him, cementing his place as the Dark Lord of the Sith. Have that death scene between Master and Apprentice play either right before or right after the death scene of Qui-Gon, 
contrasting the difference in master-pupil relationships between the Sith and the Jedi. Now imagine how these series of events changes this end scene. Always do there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. But which was destroyed? The master or the apprentice? As the screen pans to Palpatine, the audience would get chills with him hiding in plain sight, which, after all we'd seen him do, would reinforce just how badass he really was. The takeaway should be obvious. Focus on your best characters, the ones that interest your audience. Oftentimes, what makes a good movie is less what happens and more how it happens, how we see it unfold. By incorporating Palpatine more into the plot, less time would be devoted to unneeded characters and other unneeded plot points. We would have seen Palpatine's journey from an apprentice to the unquestioned master of the Sith arts, all while he slowly inched his way higher up the political ladder. A darker cloud would have been cast over the capital of the galaxy, which would have engaged audiences more into the new world into which the young Anakin Skywalker ignorantly ventured. We would have been immersed in one of the two main character arcs of the prequels, the one that needed to drive the story until Anakin came of age. To check out more of what Sidious and Plagueis were up to, click the links in the details, which would take you to two great channels for everything Star Wars. Stay tuned for the next episode, where I use Attack of the Clones to show the difference between showing and telling, and how poorly crafted dialogue led to missed opportunities. Thanks for watching everyone, see you next time.